offer a different sort of meditation today the talk as well uh, my focus today is going to be based around an idea of of independence and freedom uh, <clears throat> I didn't know that until within the last few minutes. And a, a friend of mine that passed a couple of years ago, his presence came really strong in in the last couple of minutes. And I think he's sort of speaking through me now. I don't want to freak you out. Don't run for the door. Um, I'll talk about him during the talk. But what we're going to do to begin is I'm simply going to ask everyone to just close your eyes right now. And we're going to take three deep cleansing breaths in through the nose, holding that in the body temple for just a few moments, and then out through the mouth. Let's do that three, three times at your own pace, okay? meditation today is going to be a bit less about me guiding you so much as us taking a journey of frequency. We're going to begin with a little bit of toning, which I'll explain that to you right now. What toning is, is taking a sacred word or sound, I guess all sound and words are sacred on some level, and you're basically elongating the vowel sounds. And the sound that we're going to make sounds like this, kia ruta. Kia, kia like the car, ru ta, kia ru ta. Can you say that? Kia ru ta. Hear that tone? This is an F. This is the, the tone of the heart chakra, which is why my bowl is green. <laughs> Not that I have a green heart, but the, the green represents the heart chakra. So let me tone for you once. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this sound together seven times, okay? And then after those seven times, we're going to be in that open space of silence, and then I'm going to very mindfully begin toning this bowl. And what we're going to do is, rather than me talking for quite a while, we're going to simply sit with the vibrations of the bowl, okay? And then we'll end in silence. So this is very much about openness, about independence, about freedom, about an open heart. So just listen. I'm going to do this first one so you understand what I mean by toning. Just listen. It doesn't have to sound perfect. It doesn't have to be in tune either. Okay? Everybody ready? We're going to make this sound seven times. Also, I'm going to let me say... Uh, it doesn't have to be in tune or in harmony. It doesn't have to sound like the Andrews sisters or, you know, the Weavers or something. It doesn't have to have four-part amazing, although it does happen sometimes. The other thing is it doesn't have to last forever. Don't think you have to turn blue in the face and fall over, okay? It's just about being open. So we're going to make that Kia Ruta sound seven times, okay? Everybody ready? Get a good breath. Kia Yeah. 
so it is. How's everybody feel? Super. Super, as in like, <gasps> big ass on the shirt. Um, you know, one of the things that's become so clear to me over the years, especially recently with the little bits of changes that we're experiencing out in the world, maybe a little, um, not including politics, that's so clean and clear this year, right? Um, <laughs> I could not go there. I'm away from that subject now. Uh, but has anybody had any experiences recently maybe where just a huge flood, I've probably talked about it here before, a flood of feeling moves in and you just, you're there doing whatever and all of a sudden you just feel some sort of dramatic shift that you can't put into words and you just have to stop and breathe uh, and sort of have maybe like a little bit of a disoriented feeling for a little while and then you just kind of go back into your day. Um, that happened, well it happened to me, um, it's been whatever, I guess it's been about a month now. On a Friday, about four weeks ago, uh, I had just directed a music video for a friend of mine, because uh, uh, I'm a photographer, a videographer, I work with audio and sound as well. Uh, the song's called Meditation is the Medication to Cure the Illusion of a Separation. Um, from Bob Saima, who is definitely somebody to have here sometime. He travels a lot. Amazing, incredible, conscious singer, songwriter. Uh, but we released the video on a Friday at noon. It had, I believe, a thousand hits within 24 hours. Uh, and at the end of the video, there was a little clip. There's some clips where it's, uh, where it, uh, there's a part in the song where he says, Om Namah Shivaya, we are one when we are all together. We are one when we are all alone. And there's a clip of Martin Luther King and the I Have a Dream speech at the Reflecting Pool Lincoln Memorial. Then it goes into a little clip of uh, the falling of the Berlin Wall and everybody climbing up on the wall, helping each other from both sides so they can come together on the top of the wall. Uh, and then it ends with the day that marriage equality uh, was passed by the Supreme Court. Um, and there's this amazing thing where it says, choose love. It was five big red balloons. And there's a shot of the five big red balloons saying, choose love. And all of a sudden, they float up into the sky at the end of the song. And our little girl, Shamaya, who's in the other room, is in the video. Uh, it's amazing. She's amazing at the end, especially. But um, the next day uh, was when the Orlando incident happened. Um, intriguingly, uh, and, I'll, and I, I don't want to go into media necessarily, but I will say that what we're being told of the motivation of that is not what it actually was, that whole ISIS thing. Um, it was actually a, a lover's quarrel, unfortunately, um, that's been buried. But my point here is that these, these frequencies that we're feeling lately and, and experiencing, it's like this one big profound, dramatic, celestial, cosmic orchestra. And, you know, we've spent a lot of years talking about how, talking about how thought is God or thought is king or whatever, change your thoughts, change your life. And I, I'm excited because it, it, it's been interesting to watch over the last few decades. I'm excited that finally people are starting to realize that First of all, changing your thoughts isn't going to change your life because this isn't your life. This is a dream. It's one of the reasons my book is called Echoes of an Ancient Dream. Um, because number one, this is a dream. And in terms of what happened 2,000 years ago, I do a lot with the Yeshua teachings, the Jesus teachings, in the original Aramaic specifically. We can only really read the echoes because we don't really know what happened. Um, and even that is a dream. And if someone wants to go in, if you know anything about the Akashic Records, and someone wants to go into the psychic library of humanity, even someone with proper energy know-how can even shift the psychic history of humanity. Anybody that knows how to shift energy can shift anything like that. Uh, but we spent so many years looking at the power of thought, not realizing that changing your thoughts will not change your life. It just changes your dream. Your dream is like a projection on a screen. Your thoughts are the film strip and the projector. But you're not what's projecting on the screen, which is not what's real. 
Just like going to a movie in a theater, you occasionally forget you're in a movie and you're there, you're in the middle of it. And, <gasps> and then it's like, wait a second, it's a movie. Well, that's what this is. That's what this is. Uh, Yogananda said to become the ever joyous witness of a stupendous cosmic drama, to transfer our sense of identity from the pseudo soul or ego natural, back to the natural root of our inherent divinity, taking it from what appears to be all these crazy things in the world and realizing that you're not what's projecting on the screen. That's not your life. That's just a dream. You're not the film strip, which is what you think. You're actually the light in the projector, but there's no screen, there's no film strip, and there's no projector. <laughs> and we think this is our life, but this isn't our life. You are life itself, which is eternal, which means it's unborn and cannot die. And it can't even know itself. It can only be itself. Um, I always love using my light pen. I've probably used it every time I've been here. And it's, it's an intriguing thing that I say, how many lights am I holding? Well, it's one light, right? Well, so we have this apparent, apparent impression that there's nine billion people walking across the earth. But we are literally the angelos, which is the Greek word angel, which is the word messenger. We are the messengers of the light. Angelos is also the, the root word for angle, because we are literally the light of eternity projected into this dimension that we call the world, refracted in all these different dimensions as nine billion souls. But how many lights are there, really? It's just one. And we tend to look at what's projecting. We tend to look at what's projecting, and we don't realize that. Thank you. We don't realize that. We think that we're looking something outside, at something outside of ourselves, but there is nothing outside of ourselves because there's only one. This is something that the old religious structures that we've been in for so long are cracking away, and not everybody is really able to grasp that because we're trying to understand it on the level of words and thoughts. But let me tell you something. Thoughts have absolutely no creative power whatsoever. Your creative power doesn't exist on the level of thought. All that thought is is the crystallization of feeling. And I do not mean emotion. That's different. Feeling is the interpretation or the sensation of frequency and vibration. That's where your creative power lies, is in how you feel about the frequencies and the vibrations that are moving in and around and through you. And you can feel it without having a thought about it. Thought is crystallized feeling. Thought is, we have that sensation or interpretation of all these vibrations, which is called ruha in Aramaic. And thought is when feeling, we focus upon it and it crystallizes down to become a thought. Let me t ask you a question. Those moments when you felt absolutely transcendent, you were at the still point of everything, you were one with all that exists, what's the one thing you were not doing in those moments? Thinking. You were not thinking. Changing your thoughts doesn't create or change your life. And you do not become what you think about because you are eternity. Your dream becomes that. That's a really important distinction because your dream is not what's real. There's a great line in The Course in Miracles that's been coming out of my mouth a lot lately, and it has been for 25 years, where it says that nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And we're trying to understand what's happening in the world, but you can't understand that. Because in order to understand this, you have to form some sense of thought about it, and as soon as you do that, you crystallize what you're feeling and you recreate the very thing you're trying not to look at. Let's see if, I'm gonna go back to politics for one second, because it's just too funny not to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Harry's laughing really big on that one. Uh, I'm gonna show you why you have no choice in what you think, okay? And this is how, this is how mass media and advertising works, okay? Let's see if it works to not think about something, okay? Don't think about Donald Trump. Sorry about the eye. Everybody's like, oh. What are you not thinking about? Who are you not thinking about? See, in order not to think about it, you have to think about it. And we're trying to form these thoughts and reference points about why it looks like the world is falling apart, 
And in that, we feel like we're falling apart. And we're all connected. There is no us, in fact. There's just that, that one undivided, it doesn't matter what you call it. It really, it really doesn't. But what's really happening right now is all these changes and shifts are happening on a level of frequency. And we're really, I, mentioning Louise Hay a few minutes ago, let's just look at this. Imagine, look at the last 40 years, look at the last 40 years and take out two people. Take out Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer. Would you want to live in that world? Be, imagine, look at the influence and the way that they influence so many others and so many others and so many others. But all of us are that light. Everybody in this room and a lot beyond this room and some that may be afraid to come into this room. Why are they afraid? Because of their deeper feelings that they don't feel comfortable with. Because what happens with is when we're out here in the world and all these frequencies are vibrating, our energy body opens up. The more intense the amplitude of the frequency, which means the stronger. Um, let me give you an example of that, actually, since I'm sort of a little bit about frequency, right? Here's a great, beautiful chime, Woodstock chime. Woodstock, which just talk about synchronicity, is going to be my subject in a moment. This is made in Woodstock, New York. What a beautiful frequency, isn't it? There's a judgment in that, and there's a thought about that, that that frequency is beautiful. Because I'm going to play the frequency for you again, and you might not feel it so beautiful. I'll stop it. Welcome to the world today, right now. It's the same frequencies that have been there the whole time, but kind of like an orchestra that's very quiet and silent, and the, the musicians start to tune up their instruments, you're not noticing much about things. You're kind of used to being a little bit out of tune. Um, and I will say a reference to a film. Anybody seen the movie Whiplash with J.K. Uh, Simmons? A great, amazing film. He won the Oscar for it last year. Uh, it's quite a trip, quite a ride. Uh, but as the orchestra begins, if they started to play a song, the stronger it becomes and the more intense that song becomes, there's an interesting relationships that start happening. One is that you become very aware of those instruments that are not in tune in the orchestra. And that includes your energy body. It's an orchestra. That's what sound healing is. It's allowing the frequencies in our energy body to be recalibrated back to truth rather than the what we interpret in the world, which is how we think and feel. That's what on earth as it is in heaven means. It means that it's not necessarily just me and my feelings and thoughts and wants that are creating the world around me, but rather that I'm allowing myself to be that open portal or vessel or heart so that life can create through me without me needing to get in the way. That's what on earth has it. That's what a new earth means. The new earth is that it's not us having to create it. We just need to get the heck out of the way because it creates itself. And the only reason it's not here is because we're putting all these frequencies into this amazing orchestra that we have that aren't calibrated to truth. And that's what emotion is. Emotion is the difference between what you think and feel and whether it's in, in harmony or resonance with universal truth or out of it. If what you're thinking and feeling is in harmony and calibrated to that whole truth, that holiness, you feel joy and ecstasy. Church told you for a long time, you can't feel that. You can't feel that. I don't need a show of hands. How many people feel ecstasy on a daily basis? Ecstasy. We're all like, I want to be happy, and you know, today's happy, and it's like, happy's cute, but happy's a choice. It's sugar on top of something really smelly. <laughs> Joy isn't something you choose. Joy is what happens when you remove the bushel baskets from the light. When you remove those uncalibrated frequencies from the orchestra, you're not even really removing them. What you're actually doing is allowing yourself to be open so that they can be recalibrated and retuned back into the one. And then your life, your life begins to reflect that. And that's what's happening right now. All these frequencies that we weren't aware of as the energy body opens up, all of a sudden, like a piano, and if you play really lightly on an acoustic piano, you play really lightly 
you're not going to hear a lot of resonance from other keys, but as you start hitting it harder and harder and harder, or a guitar or whatever it is, all of a sudden all these frequencies you couldn't hear are, are here. And we asked for greater light, higher awareness, faster vibration. We wanted to be the, we are literally the ones we've been waiting for. We are the seventh generation that Crazy Horse, Tashimko Witko, talked about in 1877, September 1877, to Tataki Ohata, Sitting Bull. And he said, I see a time of seven generations when all of the colors of mankind will gather under the sacred tree of life and the whole earth will become one circle again. Seven generations, about 2010 to 2025, and we're just past the midpoint. They're always talking about seven generations, though. But that's a real particular one in there. But as the energy body, as the amplitude increases, because we ask for greater light, higher awareness, faster vibration, the car is not going 20 miles an hour anymore. Now it's going 120 miles per hour. And what happens when it's going really fast, you're very conscious. Anybody ever done white water rafting or something like that, being at the, the leading edge of the rushing headwaters? And as that, <gasps> is expa that expansion's happening, this was called the pinnacle of the temple in Gnosticism. It didn't mean climbing to the top of a brick church tower. <laughs> metaphor, metaphor. It's about the energy body being open because when your frequencies are coming out at a really strong amplitude, you're aware of things that aren't in resonance, that aren't in tune with the whole, which is why you're thinking stuff that you're like, How, why am I thinking this? I thought I let go of that 30 years ago because everything is open and up right now. It's all out all over the floor. I love in the Gospel of Thomas, uh, Yeshua says, that which you bring forth from within you will save you. That which you do not bring forth from within you will destroy you. Them's fighting words. <clears throat> but the, the person that entered into my mind, just completely out of left field, was a, a dear friend of mine that died. I guess it's been three or four years now. Um, this is a guy who I spent so many countless hours with him from the time I was about 17 until I was in my like, late 20s. Uh, in so many different states, you know, New York, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Florida, uh, all these different places. Um, but this is a guy who went to, he was at a, a festival back in 1969. Some people may have heard of it, Woodstock, uh, which wasn't in Woodstock. It was in Bethel, okay, because it moved from one place to another. Um, and he's just standing backstage, and this guy, Michael Lang, the promoter, walks up to him and says, uh, I need you to go on. And Richie's, Richie Havens is his name. Richie's like, there's half a million people out there. Uh, I don't think I'm, uh, uh, no, I'm not going on. So he goes out there, and he does eventually go out. He's wearing this really long, uh, full body length dashiki. Um, and I get choked up because I've had so many, I had so many amazing experiences with him. There was a point where he's looking out on the crowd, and every song that he knew was a he had sang them all. He sang his set list. Um, and he's here, and there's 500,000 people on a hillside. And he looks out there, and it's, he said there was no thought in his head. There was nothing to grab. There was no song to grab next. There was no lyrics, no words. And all of a sudden, he just starts, he just, Richie had the most amazing picking hand with a guitar. It was just incredible. And his foot would get going. Uh, and all of a sudden, these words start coming out of his mouth. And he starts going, freedom, freedom, freedom. He just starts singing the word freedom. It just came through his soul. That sound that we toned in the beginning of the meditation, Kiyabruta, is the word freedom in Jesus' language of Aramaic. Um, I didn't know any of this until I got up. I didn't know any of this was going to happen this way. And I didn't even think about the Woodstock Chime thing. Um, Intriguingly, the next words out of his mouth was he went into a, 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 an ancient folk song, tr a traditional song called Motherless Child, that was often sang in the fields by cotton workers and sharecroppers and slaves back in the 19th century. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like I'm all alone, a long, long way from my home. Do you feel that maybe lately? that maybe you feel that you're somehow frayed at the edges recently, as spiritual as you are, or maybe you're just one of those dots that feel so solitary from the others, not realizing that, I always say it when I'm here and I'll say it this time, 
that what you're looking for is what is looking. From St. Francis of Assisi, take a breath and let that in. What you're looking for is what is looking. It's different than what Rumi said, what you seek is seeking you. That's nice, but that's still duality. What you're looking for is what is looking. You're looking for peace, power, presence, prosperity, deep, tremendous, wide, empathetic, cosmic love, and that's the natural state of your being. You are not what you're dreaming. You are not what you are thinking. You're also not what you're feeling. But I'll say this, as those frequencies are moving in the system in this dream, I'll give you one piece of advice that I've always said every time I've been here, which is maybe seven times or so. Uh, remember to be aware of your breath. And remember to keep your breath moving. Breath is the word rucha in Aramaic. It's the same word as spirit, energy, magnetism, electromagnetism, electricity, wind, heartbeat. It's all the same word in Aramaic, and it means frequency. Frequency or vibration. If you can just be aware of your breath and allow your awareness in this present moment to be aware of the frequency of your breath, those frequencies that are in the system that are dissonant will recalibrate themselves. The ones that are not, if your breath is not moving, will intensify and lock into your system. My beautiful five-year-old girl is in the other room, Shemaya, which is the word heaven in Jesus' language in Aramaic. An example would be that you've got a three-year-old girl that gets, is dancing beautiful pirouettes on the floor and her drunk father comes home and she grabs her the glass asteroid, knocks it across the floor, it smashes all over and he doesn't even have to hit her, screams her down into the fetal position on the floor and what's she not doing? <coughs> so all of those frequencies that were now put into her system lock into place. And then she's 33 years old, standing in front of her life partner, male, female, doesn't matter who it is. Maybe they've got the scent of alcohol in their breath. Maybe it's just the right look, the right feeling. And all of a sudden, whew, this 33-year-old woman is looking at her father from the perception of a three-year-old. And she's completely unconscious of the process because she's lost in the dream, not realizing that she's not what she's seeing. She's what sees. This world that is constantly whoo, 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 is not what's real because there's quiet in the eye of every hurricane. And the hurricane's not what's real. What's real is what T.S. Eliot called in the four quartets the still point of the turning world. That's who you are. You're the still point. You're not all this. This isn't even real. You and me as these somehow separate entities aren't what's real. What's real is, again, what is looking. And you touch into that by allowing yourself to be open, by being aware of the movement of frequency and vibration, being aware of the movement of your breath, and remembering independence, interdependence, freedom, synchronicity. As soon as you recognize something like synchronicity, all of a sudden it's everywhere in your life because as you recognize it, you expand it and recreate it. What are you focusing on? You don't have to have a thought about it. All you need to do is have a feeling about it. Thoughts crystallize feeling. That's not where the power is. The power is on the feminine level of... So if the feelings, if you feel resistance to the feelings, open up your energy body and get your breath moving. Because whether you like it or you don't like it, whether you feel pleasure in that feeling or pain or suffering, you're not going to get what you want in the experience. You're only going to get what's obvious to you, which is the Latin word manifest, manus festus, as obvious as my own hand. If you're asking for a beautiful world, but your gut says it's not real, that it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, regardless of your words. Because it's not your words that create it's your feeling. So what I'm saying is just be open. Be aware of that. And with all of this, that's how I can sit there and look at Martin Luther King. Every you know, single year, I sit down in February, and I just bawl my eyes out uh, watching speech after speech after speech after speech after speech. And here's a guy in the middle of a million people 
And it's just, it's, he's just, there's a still point there. And you can look at any of those great leaders. We don't have many of those leaders right now in the world because I don't believe we're going to have another great leader like that. I believe it's us because we are literally the generation of light. We are the seventh <coughs> generation and we are literally, we are the ones we have been waiting for. So let's start living it. So I want to do something unusual, which is have everybody stand briefly and give yourselves a hand because this is what we're here for. This is the big dance. Let's do it. Thank you for being open.